And we are live, folks. Welcome to uh, episode 3101 of the Survival Podcast. 3,101 times we've gotten together. It's Wednesday. That means it's time for an interview. I have a guy I've been uh, following on Twitter for quite a while since I hooked up with him through uh, choiceapp.io about getting him on the show here. And we're going to talk a little bit about choice toward the end and how you can actually invest Bitcoin with your retirement. But we're going to actually do deep dive into some stuff about Bitcoin. Honestly, I've just been rapping with Brian before we launched and that we've really never covered on the air before. And some new stuff I've discovered with, with Lightning Network, uh, how Bitcoin is like a huge tent if we do it right. Localism, uh, building communities with Bitcoin. It's, it's going to be an awesome thing. But Brian, I always like to start out with kind of the uh, the background connect with the audience question. So like I always say, like, go back to when like you were spacing out in study hall in 11th grade. And how does that lead you to working with choice, being a Bitcoin max? Like, how do those two worlds yep. get together? Because I guarantee you when you were like, yep. gee, I wonder if that chick will go out with me if I ask her, you weren't thinking about any of this. Yep. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. So love it. Appreciate the intro. Um, seventh or 11th grade, I wanted to be a hedge fund manager. Working in finance was cool. Working in finance was cool. I wanted to study economics, wanted to be a hedge fund manager. Wanted to go to a Christian university because my parents went to a Christian university, narrowed down Christian universities that had economics, landed at Azusa Pacific. Math got too hard in the economics department, so I went home from economic econometrics class, switched to business admin, graduated early, and went to work for a financial advisor. So I got, I did it. I was the office manager for a financial advisor, worked for a credit union, worked on the loan sales side, did that whole thing. Um, and along the way, I get one email from my dad that says the word Bitcoin in it, but like, but we didn't, yeah, we didn't do anything with it, with the word, like with that one email, fast forward to the following year, we download Coinbase and we, it wasn't a financial revolution at the time. It was because we both liked being on the internet. Like my dad is very hyper online, like person, online marketing, work from home, like was very, I would go to work from home conferences, like with my dad and just fit, what's the latest thing that people are doing, whether selling t-shirts or whatever we were doing. And so Bitcoin was just the latest thing on that. And I inside the finance world of like, oh, wanting to be a hedge fund manager, I, I liked politics. Like I was the student body, like president kid. I was the like, oh, like if we just, if we just get the right people together, you know, we can fix the things and just like make better decisions and, you know, do the things. Like I, an example of that is like at the university, they would oversell parking spaces. And so no one had any place to park because in the senior apartments, they would oversell parking spaces. I was walking around the university one day and I realized that they were double striping the lines. Like if you just restripe the lines and use single lines, you gain a foot back per space. We could sell all these spaces. Like that's what I hope, that's what I thought government was. Like again, in like student government, college student government, that's what I thought government was. So I started working on political campaigns also while working at the credit union, helping people run for county supervisor and things like that down in Orange County. And two things happened. That's very like gig work. Like I, I learned that working for yourself, you can make more money. Like that's when immediately the light bulb went on of like how much more money you can make 1099 than you can W2. So I learned that. And so I, I worked 1099 for like eight years, but I would have time off. So I'm watching YouTube. So when my girlfriend, now wife, was at work, like I was watching YouTube about Bitcoin. And so my disenfranchisement with politics and wanting to be a lifer, like political consultant was going downhill as my understanding of like, like, holy crap, like Bitcoin is politics, like was going up. And so that's when I eventually switched from, you know, working on political campaigns to working for Bitcoin. And so I'm super thankful to be doing that now for, I would, I would consider myself like a, like I've been a like daily Bitcoin activist since like 2019. So I've, I've met a lot of people. I've been to a lot of meetups. I've spoken in like eight different states. I've seen the way that the Bitcoin economy is developing um, in small towns and big towns across America. Like Bitcoin is, is inherently political. And for me, the, like the, like the positive things for humanity about it are like completely intertwined with the positive things for your own personal finances. So I can't, there's nothing else that I can think about being involved in. That's like 100% good for me personally and 100% good for the world at the same time. And so that's why like, I think about it every day. I have to say you're the first person that answered that. What did I want to be when I was going to grow up with hedge fund manager all the way back mm -hmm. in high school. So I think you're probably in a better place now than you would have ended up if that worked out. I just, I listened to uh 
a, a, an article that uh, Guy Swan was reading on Bitcoin Audible recently. It was about why yuppies with high yes. grades out of MBAs yes. reject Bitcoin. I didn't get through it yes. all yet, so we won't dig into it. It was really interesting. Um, one thing I like to ask people whenever we talk about Bitcoin, though, is how they answer the question, what is Bitcoin? Because I find mm -hmm. a lot of people, especially people that are still resisting this, if yep. you ask them what Bitcoin is, they don't know what Bitcoin is. They think they yep. know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bitcoin is better money. Like Bitcoin is open source software that is better money. Okay. What do I mean by better money? The money that we current, like you can learn more about Bitcoin by studying the current way that fiat money works than you can by actually studying Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin is better money because it plugs like the value hole. It's not constantly being skimmed off the top and skimmed off the top. Like my grandparents got skimmed off the top. My parents got skimmed off the top. Their whole economic output, my grandparents and my parents' entire economic output got skimmed off the top. Like because of the nature of what the dollar is, it got skimmed off the top. Bitcoin is software that fixes that problem. And so now my one-year-old son, I have my one son is turning one-year-old this Friday. If we do our jobs right, he will never open a USD bank account as we know it. And he will not get skimmed off the top. Like we're stopping that right now with software. That's what Bitcoin is. Kicked out of my own studio there, but you rolled through it. So that was great. Um, yeah, man. You know what? When you say Bitcoin's better money, one of the things that I've picked up recently as a way to explain this, and I, I think it might have been from Safe Dean's um, Fiat Standard, is that gold was better money than fiat in holding value across time, but fiat was better money in moving value across space. Mm -hmm. So moving a million dollars worth of gold, especially in 1900, before we changed the, the, the monetary standard uh, a large degree with the Federal Reserve, I mean, think about it before airplanes, especially. You got to move a lot of heavyweight metal from, let's say, New York to London on a yep. ship without some pirate taking it from you. And even today, I mean, you're talking about dudes with guns, motorcades. It's expensive yep. to move gold. So then you end up having to trust people who you know you can't trust to create a gold derivative in the form of some sort of financial instrument backed by gold. When yep. we do a true fiat standard, you can say what you want about it sucking, and it does, but it was much better at moving value across space. So now I want to move money from New York to London. There's still a lot of shit that Bitcoin fixes with the speed of that, the ease of that, and the regulation. But it's much better than gold as far as moving yeah. it from New York to London and London back to New York. But what Bitcoin does to me is it solves the, the, the problem of holding value across time. And at the same time, it improves the speed of moving value across space because now we can move money from here to Tokyo or to the Philippines or to Brazil or to El Salvador in you know minutes on the regular chain and seconds on lightning. Mm -hmm. and it's also go ahead. It's also it's also unconfiscatable when you hold it yes. correctly. It's unconfiscatable because when you're holding when you're holding digital money, like like we already have digital money. Totally fair point. Like, yeah, but when you have your digital money sitting on someone else's server and they have the ability to choose whether you have access to it or not, that's that's an issue. Like then when you, you can run into problems with that. So Bitcoin is unconfiscatable. You know, I just had this debate. If you can call YouTube comments a debate. I, I was fortunate enough. I was on Ron Paul's show yesterday and I cool. mentioned Bitcoin like it was 30 seconds of a half hour mentioning Bitcoin. Yep. And yep. that's the one thing the yep. dude wants to zone in on. He's like, they yep. can seize it. And he brought up the two idiots that had their Bitcoin taken that were part of the Bitfinex thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, they did not have Bitcoin seized. And his point was, well, they wouldn't have called it that. The media wouldn't have called it that if that's not what it was. Okay, sure. But <laughs> I tried to explain, like, we actually use what happened to these people to explain how to secure your Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. I found all these people that think the government can shut it down, the government can seize it. I have always offered in a very cordial way I would love to take somebody with that contention and do an online live stream academic style debate, third party moderator, rules mm -hmm. for your time limits, mm -hmm. not talking over each other, open, close, cross-examination, zero. Mm -hmm. And my only conclusion from that, these people that are resisting with that thing, well, they can to steal it. They either know they're wrong, which I think is the minority, or they don't have enough information to to logically and rigorously debate it, but yet they're sure they're right. 
Yeah. And I think there's a fear there. And I think another fear, I think I, listening to some of your other stuff, dude, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Kind of an epiphany I had recently was in our hearts and minds, when we look at Bitcoin, we know what it is, even if we're not orange pilled yet. Right. Yeah. So you're now moving to a world of long time preference from a world of short time preference. And when you talk to somebody about improving their diet and they're eating Twinkies, right, they know the Twinkies are bad, but the Twinkies taste good. And so they don't really want to have the conversation about moving from the short time preference of sugar to the long time preference of a healthy body. I mean, I did it myself yeah. five years ago, dude. I weighed 100 pounds more than I do, right? Yep. Like, yep. They don't, but I think there is in the, and I don't think it's up front. I don't think they know they're doing it, but I think that when you start pushing people into the Bitcoin standard, somewhere in that back psyche, there's this idea that I'm going to have to treat money differently because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I, I, I made a pretty good income my whole life once I got out of like those young years where you're fucking starving, right? Like once I got out right. of that, I've done well for right. myself. So if I want to buy a thing, you know, 12 years ago, do I have enough money to buy the thing? Can I still save for my retirement if I buy the thing? Am I going to have right. to not take my wife out when she wants to go out because I buy the thing? And if the answer to those are all check out, like, okay, I'm going to buy the thing. Right. Now when I go to buy the thing, do I want to take the amount of sats away from my future to have yep. the thing? And then yep. a lot of the things I would have bought, I don't buy. And yep. I think there's a psychology that if I accept this for what it is, I know this is going to happen to me and I'm not ready yet. And I know that's like yep. really deep, but I think that's yep. maybe part yep. of it. Yep. Def no, I fully agree. Like fully agree. And I, I just think that dude, like life is very hard, man. Like life is very hard. I don't think I don't taking it back to the 11th grade. Like I, I don't think you realize, I don't think kids realize how long life is. Like when, when you're young and you have that, like you're looking towards the future and like life is very long and your decisions, <laughs> good or bad, compound. Like in your life, like, like I love being out of college. Like there's some people that are like, oh, I miss college so much. I would go back to it. Like the good old days, like hanging with, I'm like, dude, I'm having 10, 100 times more enjoyment every single day than I did back then. Like, and because like my, my wife and I have compounded together, like very good decisions. Like I almost feel bad, like telling people, you know, they're just like, Hey, how's it going or whatever. Like, I feel bad telling them how good it's going. And this goes down the trail of just whether it's look, whether like limiting beliefs and like all that stuff, like you're and, like being a cycle breaker, like being a chain breaker, whether it is like your physical fitness or whether you're like financial fitness or your mental health, like any of that stuff, all of that stuff is like hard. And I would like in Bitcoin, they say a thing like we say, um, fix the money, fix the world. And I like just everything. I, I think a lot, a lot of people like come back to like money, money is the number one cause of divorce. Like it just budgeting, budgeting is very hard. And so you're exactly correct. We're, we're always in search of escaping something. We're always hoping for the weekend. We're always hoping for the vacation. We're always hoping for the next, you know, high off of whatever it is. Like pick your drug of choice. Like it doesn't matter. If food is your drug of choice, sweet. Like it doesn't, we're all trying to escape something. And so I think, how's that relevant to this? How's that relevant to what you're saying? Just that, yes, like it's really hard, like making correct decisions and coming to grips with, decisions that you like may have made wrong um it well, like it's, is hard it's, it's moving from the pessimism that allows you to waste your life energy in the now to yes. the optimism that allows you to store your life energy into the future for your kids and yes. your grandchildren yes and we have taken that away I, I always use when you go to new york right you go to manhattan and you look at these churches that were built in the 1800s when gold was money and you look at the architecture and you look at just the sculpture on the facade on the outside of the church. And you're like, oh, my God, some artist focused on that one foot for two days for that one square foot yeah. to make that church. And nobody builds a building like that anymore. We have 100 times better technology today 
but we can't build the architecture of 150 years ago because we don't have long-term value being held. We have this leaking wealth formula yes. that we have today. So the, yes. the, the first thing you do if you become wealthy and you know what you're doing in the modern world is going to debt. The last thing you want to do is hold your money. You want to leverage the money as debt. And if you don't do that, you're going to lose. Like it sounds counterintuitive and it is, but it's true, right? Yeah. As soon as you no, have, and that's, go ahead. No. And I mean, that's the cancel on effect. Like that's the cancel on effect. Like the value, the value of the new money, like accrues to the people that hold assets, they get access to the money first. Rich people borrow money at 0%. Poor people borrow money at 17% on credit cards. And you're right. And then that loop causes like, but like Gen Z calls it like, like doomer pilled, like you're, you're black pilled of yeah. just, you don't, you're on a hamster wheel. You know, you're on a hamster wheel, you know, society, there's a, there's a, a caste system in society. You know that you don't know how to like climb the ranks. And so you keep searching for the high, searching for the high because, because you don't see a path out. And so people, yeah, everybody's going to die. Everybody's going to be poor. The oceans are going to yeah. rise. It's just complete. Yeah. Yeah. We can't uh, brainwashing of the young generation to where mm -hmm. since there's no there, there's no hope in the future, yes, might as well live like a baller today, even though you're not. It's the right. 80s. I'm an 80s kid. It's the 80s all over again. The 80s, we were sure the Luff balloons were gonna go, everybody's gonna nuclearize each other. So screw it. And it was just a spending right. mindset. And I think having to switch over to a saving mindset is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's one what? of the reasons. I think the other reason is that. You've heard about it for so long now, and you resisted yep. it. And then to yep. get in is to now admit that it was your mistake not to in the back. I love uh, – I think it's Peter McCormack that says uh, everybody gets the price they deserve, mm -hmm. right, to get I in. I think that, right? they also struggle with – so, yeah, I could start buying Bitcoin, but the people that already have a lot, like, they're just going to be the new rich. Like, they're just going to be yeah. the new elites, right? And so that further – like, that's the pessimist take on the whole thing. Like we've all been ripped off so hard for so many times. Like, oh, this is the path to freedom. This is the path to freedom. This is the path to freedom. But it's all just a grift. It's all just a grift. There's all just a new class that's like leeching off of the whole thing. And so to 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 hear to hear the random dude like with the beard on YouTube being like, hey, like there is no grift. Like Bitcoin is incorruptible. I understand that you've been ripped off and manipulated so many times by every single thing out there i have like i have too like in bitcoin thankfully because there's only 21 million and the way that the open source software works and the incentives are airtight people have been banging on this thing for 13 years and it's still been incorruptible name another thing name name another thing on earth right now that has been around for 13 years and is incorruptible i don't know of one i don't know of one I don't either I, I don't know. I don't know. Gold is corruptible, right? Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is incorruptible. Mm -hmm. I, I I get some of the uh, the steel man objections though, right? Like, and one is, but man, they're just going to turn off the internet, and then Bitcoin won't work anymore. And I'm thinking, first of all, most of the people that make that objection, if they turned off the internet for everybody, that person's going to be dead in four weeks anyway. Because I get the same one. What if they turn off the grid? Your Bitcoin's useless. And then that person has a 401k and a Lexus that they have financing on and they pay all their debt and freaking fiat. And like, okay, if they turn off the grid or the internet, you're dead broke and probably physically dead anyway. So I'm, I'm not going to go there. But I think there's some misconceptions. Can you talk about like people think Bitcoin can't work without the internet? It's no doubt that the internet empowers Bitcoin to work really great, but it's not a hundred percent necessary. And I know that sounds crazy, but can you speak to that? No. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I don't have my keys on me right now, but there are like USB sticks that can move Bitcoin in physical form. And then there are like mesh networking solutions that can move it from phone to phone. There's satellites that are in like up in space that can transmit the Bitcoin network and transmit the blocks without connection to the uh, regular internet. And then it, and then it also just comes back to, like the nature of software, like there is not a single point where you turn off the internet. There isn't like, that's not, that's not how it works. And so, <laughs> yeah. You can't just like Trump said, call up Bill Gates no. and tell him to shut it off no. for a while. And no? Look, and that's where the optimism starts. Like even yeah. and look, if, if Bitcoin is a hard thing to wrap your mind around because Bitcoin is the intersection of like technology and money. 
And people that only see it through a technology lens to make, make mistakes and people that only see it through a money lens make mistakes. And so if you like, we're not, um, yeah, like understanding that there's there, like the world is pretty decentralized. Like we are winning, like free, like people that uh, like appreciate freedom are winning. There are reasons to have optimism, even outside of Bitcoin in that yeah. like you, we every single person what we're doing right now talking over the internet over this software saying like things is good like that's there the world is more decentralized than we give it credit for already agreed agreed i also think like so when people tell me they're just going to shut off the internet what it makes me think is my brother-in-law who's a nice guy right um I'm not putting them down because this was where people's minds were, but way, way back, like before I was even podcasting, I've been doing that 14 years. So we're talking mm -hmm. like early 2000s or maybe late 90s. D DSL started rolling out. And up till then, everybody used dial-up modems. So he asked me about DSL. I said, yeah, it's, it's so much better. I run my, my office from home with it and what have you. So he gets DSL. He calls me like, because look, look like four weeks back then when you put in an order to actually get DSL. So he goes, well, the guy just left. And I have DSL now. And I went to, to Yahoo or wherever, and it's so much faster. You're right. And the pictures load, and this is great. But I have one question. I'm like, well, what is it? He goes, how do I get to my AOL? And I, I literally told everybody I knew, you either short or get out of AOL time, time order media now. Because this is about to like be the end of the earth for this stock. Because he asked that one question. And like to him... AOL was the internet. And I think yep. when people say they're going to shut off the internet, they think Comcast is the internet, right. or they think right. that AT&T is the internet. The internet is just right. computers talking to each other. And I guess like so I'm an old fuck, right? And in, in 1985, I was with my buddy, uh, a friend of mine was a kid. We were like fucking around on Commodore 64 computers, dialing into like the first message list, which was just like right. one giant freaking stream of text. And I guess if you ever did that, it's a lot harder for you to like accept that somebody can just flip a switch and then the whole internet mm -hmm. goes down. It doesn't work yes. that way. And so everybody yeah. would just accept it. And the other one yep. is the grid. And I'm like, dude, if they, they shut off the grid, you're you're screwed, right? Like you, you you you're screwed with all your shit. And I mean, you you can talk about this. You actually mine Bitcoin with solar. Yeah. At your, yeah. your homestead, and you're a new homesteader. Yeah. How do you yes. how do you run an ASIC with your solar array and make it yeah. make sense? Yeah. So that that's why I wanted to tell the audience. Like, so I've been involved in Bitcoin for you know a few years now, but I've only been involved in like um you know being self-sustaining and homesteading and thinking about that things for six or seven months. So like I've only owned a backyard and enough space to even think about this for six or seven months. So like Bitcoin, the intersection between bit, you know, owning self-sustainable money and like you know, off grid money or whatever analogy you want to use and being or like non centralized money, not controlled by the establishment money, and then being able to like have a homestead that's not controlled by the establishment, being an energy producer, all those things, I see the intersection there. And this is what's driving me to want to learn about these things. Like Bitcoin is my base that it gives me hope to put in the work to like be a homesteader. So that's just the way I've arrived at this. But yes, so I have solar regular suburban like lot solar what i've noticed is that like my house produces enough energy or my panels produce enough energy to run my entire house so i have a surplus now here's the problem with the establishment and the grid being a monopoly in in southern california where i live we don't have a free market for energy so the only person i can sell my surplus back to is southern california edison they will give me three and a half cents per kilowatt hour surplus. I pay them 30 cents. If I use one of them, one of theirs, I pay them 30 cents. If I produce an extra one, they pay me three and a half cents. Okay, clearly that's like not a fair it's economic a, it's a 10 arrangement. To one negative inversion, that, right? Yeah, like that's not fair. That's nothing about any market forces are driving that at all. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to keep my surplus behind my line then and run my ASICs. So like I have two ASICs, Ant Miner S9s. They're the most basic ones you can get. You can get them on Craigslist, you can get them on eBay, you can get them in Telegram groups, like 
They're the most basic ones you can get. You can't mine Bitcoin anymore with regular computers. You have to look up Bitcoin ASICs. And what I do is I have a measurement system inside my panel that tells me how much surplus I create per day. And I have an automated uh, power bar that, that I can say every day at 8 a.m., run the miners for three kilowatt hours. And so that's the way that I'm monetizing my surplus on my own property rather than selling my energy because I'm a I am an energy producer. Like I am a free thinking individual in America, energy producer in the market, the monopoly market is not working for me. So I'm retaining my surplus energy on my land and monetizing it into like free market money. And to me, like that is very beautiful. Like if, if you take nothing else away from that, that's the way that this can intersect with like Bitcoin and permaculture and like homesteading and all this stuff can can like fuse together because Bitcoin through soft and the same way the internet find its way around the establishment, the same way that Uber finds its way around the establishment, Airbnb finds its way around the establishment. Bitcoin is going to find its way around the establishment. It's like water. It can just flow anywhere because we're free thinking humans that can make our own decisions. And Bitcoin is software that just does better things for us. So, yeah, I actually your model is what most of the big miners are doing with a little bit of an inversion. Right. So the big miners are not renting a warehouse space in the middle of a city and then just tying into the regular power and paying retail. Mm -hmm. They're co-lowing their facilities as close as possible to where the power is generated, and they're buying the surplus lost energy, which is why the whole grid fund is nothing. But it's yep. you've basically taken that and individualized it, and it almost doesn't matter how long then it takes for that ASIC, whatever the, the sunken cost of that ASIC is to pay itself back. It's still a net positive versus the alternative of sending your power at a 10 to 1 negative inversion back to the grid. And maybe 100%. that would be the case in Texas where they have to pay me what I pay them, right? Yep. But if, if you're at a negative, like there's no lose. There's no way you no. lose long term in that. Right. And then we're back to what's your time preference? Because the, the, the small minded individual, I don't mean to insult somebody, but really the, the short term minded individual is maybe a better term. But say, but how quick do I get my money back? Yep. And the person thinking long term would go, since it's a positive, I don't care. Since it's a net yeah. positive, I'm ahead in this, this model. That's, exactly. that's freaking and, awesome, dude. And it gives now when I'm doing my math about expanding my system, I know that I'm not I don't have this zero like I don't have this drag on expanding my system. And so if I want to expand my system and become even more self-sustainable, you know, add batteries up my ability to like survive inside my house like that's and to me, that's been the beauty of it because because it's expensive. Like it's expensive to become self-sustaining. Like it requires resources to become self-sustaining. And so being able to like being able to yeah, turn that negative into a positive is good. So what about I, I get a lot of people that are like, man, I, I believe in gold. I believe in silver. And I, I think a lot of those people actually don't have any silver or gold. It's just another one of their steel man, you know, objections like the gold's the way or silver's the way. I am not an absolutist. I have a pretty good stack of silver, a decent stack of gold as physical, secured, I won't tell you where it is type long-term wealth insurance. I recommend people try to build about 5% of their net wealth in, in precious metals in a physical metal model. But if you ask me which is a better store of wealth and a better form of currency and a better form of, I don't even like the word currency, the better form of money Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to say Bitcoin. Why do you or do you think that Bitcoin is a better form of money than precious metal? Yeah. Um, so I use the word money and currency very interchangeably. So if I've been doing that the podcast or whatever, just getting that out That's there. Okay. And then, it's okay. Yeah, I do then, it too and I don't like it and I do it. It's it's in our head. And right? then, We're wired that yeah. way. And then so the reason why like the, the reason why I believe Bitcoin is better money than – precious metals is because the total supply cap is verifiable. So as like the purchasing power of the money increases because more economic activity is being put behind it, you're still able to verify the total supply cap. So what does that mean? That means we have, that means we have um, the, 
like things are then getting more like less expensive over time like deflate like we have a deflating like deflating money the purchasing power of the money is getting better over time so that's the reason why i think it's better and then also like already been addressed just the ease of being able to send it back and forth with a cell phone is something that i think um like is good yeah i agree and i i think that like the the real thing when you talk about like the wealth preservation and the deflationary model People will point out that the inflation rate of gold is very consistent over time. And it's very low. It's about 2%. Yep. But some years it's 2%, some years it's 5%, some years it's 1%. You don't really know. And you know if the gold price went to 10 grand, it's going to increase because every gold miner out there is going to invest in the latest technology and mine even harder. They're going to dig deeper, mine harder, produce more. You can have a thousand new entrants into Bitcoin mining tomorrow with like, let's say they come out with an ASIC that's five times better than the ASICs we have right now. It still isn't going to be any different in the amount of new Bitcoin produced. You know, within days when the halving will occur yeah. and you know exactly what the result of the next halving is. So it's not just that it's more controlled deflation in, in, in the long run. It is that it is a known. And I think this is something people that, like, this is why, you know, I mentioned uh, Guy Swan reading that article about how the, the the smart yuppies who trust the system resist Bitcoin. This is why they should love it. Yeah. Because predictability inside an economic model is, it is gold, right? Like, that's yeah. the best thing you can have is to have in your economic model a constant. So I've never yeah. even thought about it this way. So E equals MC squared, right? So the entire point of relativity is that you have light as a constant. And if you have light as a constant, you can reverse engineer everything that relates to light. With Bitcoin, yeah. for the first time in, this is weird, man. I, I can't believe I never thought of this, but in the first time in economic history, we have an economic constant. Yes. An un, yes. unalterable, uncorruptible yeah. economic constant. It's, Bitcoin is to money as the speed of light is to physics. Yes. That's huge when you think about right. it. Like that should be embraced by every economist on the planet because now you can make all your freaking models work because you have a yes. seat. It's truth. It's truth. So instead of measuring everything with a rubber band, we're measuring it with an actual stick. To to Ron's point quick about bartering and having optionality depending on what the other person demands. Actually, I completely agree with that. And I say this a lot. Like producers, and we sometimes not everyone gets people get away from this. Producers have the leverage entrepreneurs have the leverage and i understand some people that have um like have trouble like kind of understanding the bitcoin thesis they ask like well how do i buy groceries with it like which is super valid question and so sure. you like producers and entrepreneurs have leverage like when i go out and speak in conferences i throw up that scene from star wars where the jedi is negotiating for the pod racer and the guy goes hey like your republic credits aren't good here like you're, we don't take Republic credits here. Like we need money. And so completely right. If a stores choose to say, hey, like we only take gold or we only take Bitcoin, or if the bars and restaurants choose to start implementing gas station style pricing. And what do I mean by that? Where it's like cash is one price and credit is another price. Well, guess what? Bitcoin is money. USD is credit. And so if you if you if entrepreneurs start implementing that kind of pricing about, hey, here's the money price and here's the credit price. And if like people love to talk about cash is king and things like that. Currently, cash is not king because no. everyone takes credit. Everyone takes credit everywhere. If credit I go out and negotiate, if I go out and negotiate for a car, like nothing happens if I'm like, hey, I want to pay in full. They're like, OK, sweet. Like there's yeah. no, there's nothing, nothing happens. And so if we get back to a system where the entrepreneurs, here's an example of this. Costco only accepts credit from Visa. They will decline your MasterCard. They will decline your Discover right now because, and because of their market agreement. So producers and entrepreneurs choose payment terms. They have the ability to dictate payment terms. And so I would argue that from a software, like, that's the other thing about precious metals. And I agree about optionality, but just think like the world is becoming more digital. It's not becoming less digital. Like having the ability for bars and restaurants and small businesses to run a parallel payment processor, one that accepts Bitcoin and one that still accepts credit USD on the rails that are there. The credit card rails aren't going away. Like they're very, very entrenched. 
currently. They're very, very entrenched. The ACH network way of moving dollars along is very, very entrenched. There's never been, I don't know of an example of when a circular economy of precious metal has begun to take away traffic from the establishment. Like the economic bucket of economic activity that operates on the credit card networks and on the ACH network, there's not been an example of a circular economy that has like come off of gold. There's little little conferences no. and little places that'll Nobody do it. However, however, Nobody however, does they hold it. No. And people talk about barter and, and I'm not nitpicking, but I'm just like bar yeah. to me, bartering, like there's never been a bartering economy that takes traffic away from the establishment. There's never been a gray market bartering economy that takes traffic away from the establishment. Bitcoin and the way that the software works and the way that I've seen circular economies developing in restaurants beginning to run parallel Bitcoin processors across America, that to me leads down the thesis of Bitcoin being the biggest tent movement, being the like, I, 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 that's why I believe Bitcoin is the tip of the spear for people like re-controlling their economic power. You, you don't vote once every two years. You're voting every single economic decision you're making is voting. And so which bucket are you throwing it into? If you're running your credit card, if you're running your credit card for 100% of your transactions, you are voting for the establishment. You are giving them money and you're voting for them. So the very fact that in across America, like there is like, one bar, one restaurant in these towns that have Bitcoin meetups that are beginning to run a Bitcoin payment processor. Now we at least have one outpost that's beginning to do that. And so look, if the precious metal community has that and is building that network across America, sweet. Like I will go, I will go there. Like, and I'm, and I don't know if that's happening or not. However, I want people to know that that is happening with Bitcoin and that is in the lightning network, as you said. So that's, that's how I compare it then on like a software level and on like a grassroots level that this is happening. Like Strike App, Strike App and Cash App are going are going to continue to pay multi athletes and very famous people to use the word paycheck and Bitcoin in the same sentence. Tell me that kind of momentum for precious metals. What broker is paying athletes to say, pay me in gold? I haven't seen that ad. So there, there's momentum, there's momentum behind this. There's momentum behind this. And so I agree with the kind of like same team mentality. And I agree with that a lot. I just want people to really respect the momentum that is there and see it. Yeah, I agree. I, I want to move into talking about local community, localism, et cetera. This was an interesting comment because it's literally the next thing on my outline here. Uh, we just had uh, in the, the GMW said this, I'm not picking on them. It's just, this is another one of these misconceptions in the glow, uh, globalistic system. Bitcoin is useful. Uh, that system is dying. Local economies have no need for Bitcoin. And I'm like, yeah, that's funny. Cause the next thing I wanted to ask you is about using Bitcoin for localism and community building. Yeah. And where I saw this incredibly powerful, even though it didn't do anything yet, just the light bulb moment. I went to the Sex and Build seminar that John Bush put on last week. I spoke there, and my evangelism for that was lightning. And yep. so I had people when they were buying stuff, and like I couldn't get vendors to do it. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Do you have Exodus? Yes. Let me show you. Yep. Open the lightning thing. Turn it on. Here's 50 cents. Yep. You send them 50 cents, and that green check mark goes like that. There's 50 cents worth of Bitcoin. I sent you 50 cents. You have 50 cents. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Now, if you, if the person that's asking this question or making this point, if mm -hmm. you don't understand how that empowers local economies, because this is the, the fundamental weakness of any sort of like in permaculture, we call it a let's system, right? Local exchange, whatever. If you read chapter 14, the permaculture manual, Bill Mullison and his folks did a great job of explaining how you build the society localism first, then satellite local community second, and then the world third. Yeah. The weakness of let's is it's a currency that only works in your community and therefore people are very resistant to taking it. If yep. you put Bitcoin on lightning in your local economy, it's easy to accept it because if I decide I want dollars, boom. If I want pounds, boom. It's fungible across every global market in the world 24 7, where yep. anything else, even gold, only trades five days a week, banker hours. 
right? Yep. I can trade yep. Bitcoin in Tokyo at 4 a.m. on Christmas Day. Yes. And so to me, it's the most empowering thing a local community could get. And like I said, when I add lightning, because I'm not going to use Bitcoin to buy $8 worth of eggs. It doesn't make any sense. It, but I will if you put it on lightning. Yeah. Yeah. So the comments coming from the right place, the comments coming from the right place, right? Because globalism has been very frustrating and it has like, like wrecked like small communities. The, and so the, the idea of like retreating and like, like, you know, being a little skeptical of technology and like coming back and like doing that is good. However, I would argue that in addition to everything you said, like in, in being fungible across the entire world and the market for it being across the entire world, the beauty of it is like I was saying, a, so a small town that crushes it at localism on its own currency or say it's using cash dollars. Say a local town that has a, a thriving farmer's market community, thriving homesteader meetup community, and crushes it, okay? They're still not putting a dent in the establishment. They're not putting a dent in the establishment. They're not solving the issue for their grandchildren. Like, because the dollar, the physical cash dollars, like I had a, I had a consultant that like, come in and help me put a cistern in my backyard, okay? I, I told her, can I pay you in Bitcoin? Like working through her, everything we're talking about today the intersection of permaculture and all the things. She's like, no, thank you. Like, but I appreciate it. What were her options? Her options were Venmo. Okay. Venmo is digital USD inside the establishment. Okay. Yeah. So I understand, I understand that the USD as far as a unit inside our minds is still there. However, you can charge a USD amount and have the payment remitted in Bitcoin. And then like he, that same payment, everything that's happening Everything that's happening at Lengthwise Brewing in Bakersfield, California is the same thing that's happening in El Zanti, El Salvador, in like and in Central Africa Republic and in Panama, as you have the flags like on your on your profile. Yeah, OK, that's so right. that's Bitcoin is hyper allegiant to the individual and the local economies while being hyper allegiant to the biggest tent movement in the world that has the ability to like candidly like defund the establishment like you are switching which bucket you're contributing your economic energy to and you're withholding it from the establishment bucket you are saying republic credits are not good here like you're you're moving on to the other thing and so that's that's why i believe like combining like don't stop anything you're doing just add bitcoin into it everything you know about like frustrations with the establishment are most likely directionally correct. You don't have to reorient anything of that. Like you're, you're, you're way closer to it than you think. Um, it just requires, like, it just requires that like a little bit of tweaking. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I, I think that like what people need to realize is that what we're talking about here, and I, I don't think people get this. And I've been saying it a lot lately, sometimes with an explanation, sometimes just as a statement, asymmetric warfare. So I, I feel that we are at a, a state of war with the establishment. They want to control us. I don't want to be controlled. You can't commit a greater act of war than trying to control peaceful people who don't want to harm you. That is an act of war. Asymmetric warfare is talked about a lot, but I think it's been misunderstood because I don't know if there's ever been an asymmetric warfare weapon in history. It's never existed. So if I have an AK-47 and I'm the first person that develops a, a fully automatic uh, carbine rifle. And let's say the AK-47 was the only one, right? It never was the first one or whatever. I'm just using this example. The yep. worst thing that could happen to me is my enemy acquires and starts using a similar thing to the AK-47 or actually gets my technology, right? So yep. that is symmetric warfare. When I advance and my enemy advances, it's bad for me. Yep. Every time the establishment capitulates a tenth of a thousandth of a percent and allows Bitcoin into the establishment this much more, it gets better for all of us on the outside. It is 100%. the first thing in history that when your enemy chooses to use it, you become more powerful. Mm -hmm. And like when I realized, so, so I can use the Lightning Network to send dollars from New York and deliver pounds in London, because that's exactly what Jack yep. Mollers is doing with Strike. I'm like... Well, it's over. Yep. So now their network costs them a significant percentage of a transaction to move their own currency, but yep. they can move their currency on our network for free. 
Now you're at a race to zero in the market. There is yep. a point where they must capitulate. Yep. They must give in because if they don't, you could say that they can control the market and not let it be a free market. But now you have an open network. Yep. Like when I realized like, so when an MIT professor and a dude in a closet are both working on the lightning network to make it better. And at the same yes. time, I can fund my own developer who builds on top of the lightning network. It's like having the ability, like I can't build on top of the visa network. I can't mm -hmm. build on top of the MasterCard Correct. network, right? But I can, I can build my own tech on top of lightning, which is on Correct. top of Bitcoin. Okay. Yep. Now it's, you're done. And I know that's mm -hmm. hard for people to accept because we've been looking for some sort of, we're going to resist them with guns. And I think that's, I'm the biggest proponent of being an arms person in the world. You will never take my gun. But I also know that direct conflict with the state with violence is bad because the yeah. state is violence. The state is the yeah. master, the supreme master of violence, right? Yeah. I have to use my violence for defense only. And hopefully yep. I don't. Yep. Bitcoin. Yep cannot be resisted because the only thing you can do is eventually use it yourself. Yep. And so violence is, I use violence, they use violence, somebody's yep. going to lose. And I use Bitcoin, eventually they use Bitcoin. I'm not going to begrudge their win because it's yep. my win too. Yep. I think, dude, I, I think that is, uh, I think that is a sticking point for a lot of people. And it's a confusing point because we, Everything you said about like the state is correct, and so we've been we've been conditioned to be very very skeptical and very very frustrated with their decisions. And so some people could arguably say like sometimes sometimes the point about well the government can shut it down point comes from or or from like oh well banks are using it now like hasn't it the, so it lost like the banks are using it now or whatever like that comes from a lack of you're right like understanding the game theory. It comes from a lack of understanding the game theory, a lack of understanding how the system is like airtight and incorruptible because there hasn't been anything that has existed yet like that. Agreed. So can you talk a little bit more about like how we can build community mm -hmm. and, and using Bitcoin in what you call a circular economy? Because I think that's, mm -hmm. I am all for building your own local freedom cells, your yep. own local network, yep. your own local community, but a yep. community needs money. It has yep. to have money. And if you say, well, we're going to do business in cash. Yep. Okay. Well, then you're, you, I don't care that it's paper. It's still right. their money. Correct. Right? It's How still losing. It's still losing to goods and services. It's still losing to goods and services. And your movement is becoming poor. Your, your circular economy of cash is becoming poor. You're losing to the establishment. You're losing goods and services. And you're because, because you're not using the debt based system to acquire assets so that you can win in the proof of stake system that our current like economic system is. And you're not buying into Bitcoin, which is inflation resistant and goes up more often than it goes down. So you're not protecting yourself that way. So you're you're on a time schedule. You will get wiped out. You will. You'll. It'll work for a little bit, and then you're going to become tired. Like you're going to become tired. And so that's um, yes. Like so, you have the people. You have the freedom meetups, whether it's the farmers market or the like club, the whatever it is, like, and I like, I'm all for bridging every single one of those and going to multiple meetings and knowing all those local people. Um, the way, yeah, I mean, the way the way that you do it is by like talking to entrepreneurs, like if you're a business owner right now, like you have the ability to run a Bitcoin payment processor, and you have the ability to use Twitter to connect with other Bitcoiners that live in your area, that will like service your, like your store, and it'll start slow, and then it'll start bigger. And so you have that's the way, um, yeah, that's the way that I would build the build the circular economy and have been, um, yeah, for a few years. I think there's there's two ways that that fights entropy, right? And this, mm -hmm. this is permaculture, this is chapter 14. One of the reasons we create these local circular economies is there's entropy out of the economy. So every time I buy a thing, especially a consumable outside of my community, money goes out and no resellable good comes in, right? So it's mm -hmm. it's brought in, even if I resell it once, it's consumed. Now, poof, the material's gone and the money's gone. So the longer we keep money running inside that local cell, the less entropy there is out. But the other side of the entropy is the loss in value across time. So you have a, yeah. you know, 8% inflation rate right now. We have a planned 2% inflation rate over time, which they've ne they've never done better than four. Right. And mm -hmm. that's that's their numbers. So we know it's worse than that. So then you have entropy of the value of the money retained and you have entropy of the outflow of money versus the inflow of money. And yeah. by creating the circular economy with Bitcoin, 
you stop some of the entropy out. There will always be a need to bring shit in from people yeah. that, that, that you can't produce. If you want coffee, you're not right. You, you might have a local roaster, but you don't have yeah. a local coffee farmer in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It, it, I, it wouldn't make sense to right. do that, right? Can I talk about how to bring Bitcoin in? Yeah. So great point. Yeah. And how to bring Bitcoin in. So here's here's the other thing too. Most of the time, yeah, if you're not a producer, so if you're not a producer, you're like bringing in income from like, I love the example of using people with W2 jobs. Like I told Jack before we recorded, like I have a big like spot in my heart for people with W2 jobs, with families, with mortgages, like, because that's who I am. And I know a lot of this stuff can move towards like, well, yeah, if you're, you know, young and single and a software developer, like I kind of understand like how it works. Like, no, here's how good the products have become. Jack talked about the strike app, cash app lets you do this now. You can direct deposit a W-2 paycheck from your regular normie job to Bitcoin. You take your checking account and your routing account number from Strike App and from Cash App. You go to the back end of ADP at your normie job that you do whatever you do, and it gets deposited to your Bitcoin wallet. And then boom, you're in. And then same thing. The apps are getting better every single day in order to be able to, pay, to, be able to ACH out from your Bitcoin balance to pay your mortgage or to pay off your credit card or to pay your water bill that doesn't let you use your credit card, you know? So that's what I mean about using Bitcoin as your base money. So as is every single town is going to face different levels of adoption with like the merchants and the producers, the majority of us are employees somewhere. Here's the other thing that's tough about this. Like we, you talked about being confronted with Bitcoin making like is a hard decision and being confronted with hard life decisions. The majority of us are employees. Like, so it's like, how do we help? How do we help the movement? How do you help whatever self-sustainability? You do it by recognizing that there's an establishment bucket of value and a freedom bucket of value. And no matter where you work now, the, the people that have been working on Bitcoin and working on making like this new reality better have given you ways to interface with the legacy system while using freedom money as your base. So because, so now instead of on the old world, you know, depositing your paycheck to a bank, withdrawing in an ATM and then participating in the farmer's market or the meetup once a week, you're now every single paycheck going to base money. You're literally like withholding liquidity from the establishment system. You're withholding liquidity from that system that like hates us. Like, yeah. and you're, you're holding it in a vote for the future. All the sats you're holding and all the sats that you retain under your control and your community retains under your control is all tides are lifting El Salvador. All tides are lifting Central Africa. All tides are lifting Panama. All tides are listing the Bitcoin meetups and the freedom people scattered across America. That's the way that your local economic decisions and honestly, your one-off economic decisions are lifting everyone. So it's like we've, we've talked about the... Um, People used to meet, you used to only be able to talk to people like inside your local town. So you'd have to find like-minded individuals inside your local town. And then those are your friends. Now, what are we doing online every day? Online every day, I'm meeting Jack. We're like-minded individuals. We're becoming friends because of the decentralization of the internet. Like, so we're able to work together now with this information to make the world a better place. That is Bitcoin. Like that's what Bitcoin's doing. Bitcoin people just presented at the Oslo Freedom Forum and they talked about how like Bitcoin is a VPN for your money. Like Bitcoin is money in the cloud that retains your control. So you're you're lifting everyone up by participating in it. Yeah, I I, I completely agree. And I think that like in the end, we do have this this idea that but if I'm holding Bitcoin, right? And somebody commented on this and we'll probably kick it out when we, we hit them all the comments at the end, since we're going to hit it now that you have this volatility that scares me. Right. So yeah, like 8% inflation this month is crippling, but you know, when Bitcoin takes a dump from 40 to 30 K that hurts, but see, I'm back to time preference. And if you want to live mostly on Bitcoin, you can. And, and these, this fluctuation is not as rapid as people think because that's your short-term money. So I wouldn't begrudge anybody that took this approach. I'm going to spend as much Bitcoin as I can in my real-time cash flow, right? I'm not really worried about Bitcoin right. volatility over a two-week period very much. I'm really not, Correct. right? 
So right. when I get because paid every today, paycheck resets it, every yeah. paycheck resets it. That's and what I'm saying, right? So the person yeah. that takes that money and says, "Okay, so this is my next two weeks worth of money," they don't have much to worry about. And most people pay their freaking rent a couple of days after they get paid. So yeah, you know that can high or low you a little bit, but it's not significant. And then you have your long term money, what we think of as long term savings and investment. You can throw all that yep. in Bitcoin. And you can just relax. Like I said, you want to build wealth with Bitcoin stack stats, put yourself in a coma. The person says, but I want to keep my 90-day emergency fund in USD. Okay. I, I And I think that's actually a fine idea because if you need to rely on it, you can't handle the dip we just had, right? But if you're holding it in USD and you're like, that's a, that's a good looking dip, well, you might pull 5 or 10% of it and buy the dip with it and move that to long term and then resupply on your next paycheck that piece, right? We need to start thinking differently, much differently when it comes to things like this. Yeah. The, the personal finance advice, the, the personal finance advice we grew up on is not relevant to the new world we live in anymore. It's not relevant. It's like you can take the bits and pieces that are good and like continue to do it, but we need to update it. We have to update it because we're um look, like savings rates are not good and like people are stressed out about finances. So we we have to update the way that way that people are thinking about it. I completely agree. So another term that I got on one of your videos I was listening to was that Bitcoin is the biggest tent issue that there is today. Can you talk about mm -hmm. that a little bit? Why you think that's the case? Yeah. Just so look, I've been involved in churches, I've been involved in political parties, I've been involved in freedom movements, different things. Um, and like what happens and people can experience this and put their own words to it, but fracturing, like fracturing happens and there's competing interests that then the competing interest oftentimes just like any momentum will deteriorate into competing interests within a small group. And within Bitcoin, like you said about even if like every single inch that the establishment gives to Bitcoin or every single inch that they like adopted just a little bit, that strengthens the people that like have been holding it and have been using it, strengthening that use case. That's the same thing like with Bitcoin. Like bit, some people talk about like, Bitcoin is for enemies. Like there's no way you can't, it's incorruptible. You can't gain the upper hand. You can't gain the upper hand. So like the incentives themselves of Bitcoin in the way that it's just a better, the known monetary policy is truth. And everyone can refer to that truth. Everyone can refer to that truth. So now I have the ability to be talking with someone who I 99% disagree with, but the but are the 1% like Bitcoin like ties us to something that like that's what causes it to be the biggest tent. Like if me and you are sitting around and just talking about the state of America, we can solve every single issue that there is, me and you right here. But as soon as the table gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, it devolves. Like it devolves, the conversation gets scattered, things like that. Everyone uses money. Everyone uses money. Okay. So that's why it's the biggest tent like movement in the world. No, I agree. And I, I think that like, I think sometimes even some of our biggest champions, people that I really admire miss that. Um, I remember right when the whole Elon's going to buy Twitter thing happened, somebody fairly large named person tweeted out something about now integrate lightning into Twitter fully. Right. Yeah. And Adam Curry, who's, I mean, I owe him what I do for a living because he is mm -hmm. the podfather. And right? I said, I should have a mm -hmm. picture on, on my office wall of, yeah. of Adam. You know, he kind of really took exception to that and mentioned some rug pull shit with Elon and all. And it's yep. like, I yep. don't care. I yeah. want everybody to eventually accept the fate that is yep. because yep. once they do, then, okay, it doesn't fix all the problems, but it gives us the means by which to fix the problems. Gold traditionally was the governor of governments. It limited their ability to prosecute wars. It limited their ability to, to do anything because there was a finite limit. So every government eventually figured out how to create a fiat and then how to collapse themselves. Right. Yes. If you well, can create a base money that cannot be manipulated, cannot be lied about, you can create a yes. fiat and, and say it's backed by Bitcoin. Yep. But but you can't prove it, right? You yep. can't like anybody can audit it and go, no, it's not. 
uh, yeah. you know, Terra Luna. Yeah, or or your trust. <laughs> yeah, or your trust will rise and fall on how good you do at it. But so your your point about Elon and I'm perfect, perfect point, perfect illustrating point because in this world of like of um, influencers and brand economy and attention as currency and all these things, like it, look, people are weird. Egos and personalities are frustrating. Like yeah. are super frustrating. I don't love the way that everyone says everything. It's not the way that I would say it. I don't say things the way that everyone would say it. And so what happens again inside these movements is like you, like everyone's charisma, you can be the most charismatic person in the world and there's a ceiling. There's a ceiling to that charisma, which is why it's so important and so amazing. And honestly, to such a miracle that Satoshi Nakamoto, like is identity is not known. Because now there's no, like, I don't have, I don't have an opinion about the, the person or their ego or their way of doing something. And that's everything about the presidential election, everything about what podcasts you listen to, everything about who you follow on Instagram, all comes back to, you know, like we, because we are, we like community and we like hanging out with people and we like talking with people, but then same thing, dude, Elon, like, it's very frustrating, like the way he continues to talk about Dogecoin. It's very yeah. frustrating. It's very frustrating how he allowed the ESG narrative to twist his arm for him to take BTC pay server off his website. That's extremely yeah. frustrating. I wish that the billionaires in this country would like man up and help us more than they do. But I understand that like they're living in a different world of like, like politics and different decisions and they like entrenched, they're comfortable. Like they're comfortable and so they're only willing to push so far or whatever. So like the other thing I think about a lot is that the like podcasters, podcasters are almost more, more influential than the people that are even actually elected is where that takes me to. Like, like Rush Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh had a huge influence over the direction of thinking in this country, more so than hundreds of congressmen that we never know. I don't know what their name is and couldn't rattle off more than, you know, 20 of them. So that's, that's an example of just how big, like your, your personality matters and having charisma matters. But the fact that different competing charisma people, like the logic of Bitcoin, like the logic of Bitcoin is so airtight that people will be forced to put aside their differences to, to agree on it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it really is a, a completely new world. And that's why I push my audience towards it, but I don't beat them up when they resist it. There's, there's mm -hmm. two different mm -hmm. things. It's like, mm -hmm. so I think sometimes I have, you know, charisma and personality. I have a pretty aggressive alpha personality and yeah. I know when I'm just responding to you, I can sound like I'm beating you up. I never am. I'm just saying, here's the things you don't know. Don't be afraid to learn. Don't ever be afraid yeah. to let anybody cure your ignorance. But on the charisma thing, I, I think it's interesting. There's still some, you know, there's still some Bitcoin cash proponents out there, man. One of my best friends, man, he loves, it's going to, it's yep. the real Bitcoin, man. It's like, okay, you guys, yep. you're, you're a Japanese soldier in 1948 hiding in a cave that thinks you're still yep. fighting the war that's over. Yep. But they will use a thing because, well, our thing is what Satoshi really wanted. Same thing with yep. BSD, right? It's what, yep. what it seems to me like Satoshi wanted was a pristine, pure thing that did had no saint. Yeah. Right. So that's why I say it's an appeal to authority fallacy, because what it, it seems to me that Satoshi wanted was consensus to rule yeah. all. Yeah. Right. To not be the person you went to and said, what shall we do? Oh, great king. Yeah. That's why, yeah. like I always said, the, the second best thing Satoshi ever did for the world was make Bitcoin, because the yeah. first thing he did that was the best was he left. Like you, he makes Bitcoin you're like, oh, that is the greatest contribution yeah. to society. No ego, no desire to be a cult leader. I'm going to go yep. away and I'm not even going to spend my bag. Yep. Okay, that was the actual like amazing thing. And I get people like, well, what if Satoshi was really the CIA or something? I'm like, at this point, I don't even care. Mm -hmm. I don't even care because it's, it's, it's like saying, well, the government really created the internet and that's why you shouldn't use it. Like you can create a but thing and you can make a predator that runs faster than every other predator and you can let it Correct. out into the biome and you can be like, this is what I want my predator to do. And your predator's like, well, go fuck yourself because yeah. I'm going to eat you. Right. And yeah. it's like, it's like Jurassic park. You, 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 yes. you start, you let loose a breeding pair of T-Rexes. I'm sorry you did that, but now it's there. Right. 
I think that also comes from a place of fear. It comes from a place of understanding that like the, the, like, the government is made up of people. The government is made up of people. There is no, there is no the government. Yeah. And, and I make this mistake. I mean, I say this all the time, but there is no the government. It's people. No. It's people. There is a the and state, but there is no like the government, poker, right? If you're playing poker, if you're playing poker, it has, it actually has nothing to do with the cards. It has to do with the decisions the other people are making. And are you going to make better decisions than they're making decisions? And that's the other thing about Bitcoin is that every single day, more and more people are leaving working for the establishment and beginning to work on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is actually making people like hit financial freedom so that they can think more about how they want to improve the world. Like, so that's all that whole flywheel is like very, very powerful. And I just don't, I don't see that flywheel happening in any other, like in, in any other realm. No, I agree. Let's, uh, let's hit some of these things. Well, actually I want to talk about choice because yeah. well, that's, that's, you know, your job, right? Yeah. You work for choice. Tell people about choice and then we'll take some, uh, some stuff from the audience here. Yeah. So look, I'm a Bitcoin activist and I appreciate you like reaching out to the choice handle and like having me on today. Yeah. My, I'm the Bitcoin lead at choice app and choice app is the number one rated retirement app on the Android and Apple app store for you to, um, like hold Bitcoin in your retirement account. Like we're, we're, retirement app built by Bitcoiners for Bitcoiners. And the whole purpose of this is so if you have money in an IRA at Schwab, at TD Ameritrade, at Fidelity, um, at wherever you like, we are a retirement custodian. And so you have the ability to transfer it over, just simply switch custodians with no tax penalties and be able to invest it into like, if like the assets that you choose to invest in. And so that's the, yeah, like that's the entire thesis of it. And so I help, I help out on our marketing team and so the one thing I always I ask when we talk about companies to do what Choice does is yep. who holds the keys? Yep. So there's three ways. So there's three custody options. When we try to meet people where they're at, you can hold it on platform or you can upgrade to what we call institutional custody, or you can also upgrade to hold your own keys. And so you have the ability to like buy your own hardware wallet with your IRA funds and hold the like keys of Bitcoin on your own hardware wallet. We, I think that's like incredibly important. And I, I don't even care so much that people use it. I care that there's an option for it and that right. people can make their own grown up man decisions. But, I, I'm i a big believer of not your keys, not your coins, but there are people yep. like to this day that, you know, I'll just say I, I recommend Coinbase for people to get started because generally speaking, you can buy and move your coins easily enough. And the new person who's going to be comfortable with it, Strike, I do as well. But mm -hmm. get, like holding your money on those platforms, I am not for that. I think that's a very, mm -hmm. very bad thing. And it, I, I'll tell you, I don't know what Satoshi wanted, but I doubt he wanted you to hold your Bitcoin on Coinbase. I that, that I will guess at that, but I think it's a good guess. Totally. And the other thing I would add then too is, so when you hit retirement age, r regardless of which custody option you have, you choose, like you have the ability to distribute in kind. So this is where I can combine like everything I've been talking about circular like economy and about Bitcoin is base money. Like like Bitcoin is the base money of my Roth IRA. And when I turn 60, I'm able to distribute the Bitcoin in kind into the world that we've built by then. So I talk about my 10 month old son, like or my one year old son, like he is not going to live in a world where he has to open a US dollar bank account because the products are going to get so good by then that we'll be able to use Bitcoin as base money. You know, we're living in the transition period. And then by the time that I turn 60 and we've like orange pilled each of these little outposts across America and we've begun to like move the world like towards that future and like we'll be able to distribute the Bitcoin in kind and use it like as currency is how I look at the future. So that's why, um, yeah, whichever custody option you choose, being able to withdraw it at the end of the day in Bitcoin, definitely powerful. So let's hit some of these. This one, I'm not sure what he's asking. Maybe you will. If not, we'll have him. Uh, maybe yeah. you can hit us with some up, up thing. Cold storage yeah. coins and state gold backs, gimmick or legit purpose. I'm all for cold storage, but I don't know what he's talking about there. That's from you. And if you're not watching KJ for RMZ, that sounds like a ham radio sign. Um, do you have any idea what he's asking about? Because I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I'm not sure either. So, so dude, if you want to give us more on that, we will. Um, it, this one will be easy for you to answer. Brian, yeah. cool image behind you. What is it? Yep. Yeah. So this is this is a guy um, on the moon looking back at Earth, and then my wife has a matching one across at her workstation, and it's a couple sitting on the moon looking back at Earth, and it's titled um, "We Used to Live There." Oh, cool. 
Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. Um, K Bonk, who asked that question, also says best thing is the internet can't forget. Same with Bitcoin. Um, mm-hmm. There is a lot of shit given that Bitcoin is not 100% private. It's not a Monero or a pirate chain. I like privacy. I think we're building more and more privacy tools. But I also think there is a value in that anybody can validate a transaction. Uh, yeah, and I should have brought this up with the Bitcoin Cash comments. So, like, I'll, I'll combine everything about Monero, Pirate Chain, Bitcoin Cash all into this. You, like, in my opinion, you're watering it down. Like, you're, again, how we talked all about circular economy, pouring in all the economic activity into the same bucket so that that bucket becomes bigger than the establishment bucket. When we talk about, like, g- precious metals, when we talk about any other crypto, like, in my opinion, that's watering it down. Like, Bitcoin has won as far as having the most trusted monetary policy of like non-state owned money in the world right now. And so that's the reason why it's the most powerful. What I would say to people that want Bitcoin to be more fungible, it is I would tell them that the, that the tools exist. Like Samurai Wallet exists, Whirlpool and CoinJoin exists, Lightning Network exists, the ability to peg in and peg out of liquid exists. So there are ways to use Bitcoin um, in a more private manner. Agreed. Agreed. And it's not as hard as people make it. And it's all, this is my other thing. It's and, only going to get easier. Correct. It, correct. It, it, and you're it, staying, and you're staying compatible with the economic bucket that has the highest probability chance of competing with the establishment. So rather than watering down your effectiveness across multiple, this is why other anti-establishment movements fail is that they water down their effectiveness across like fringe issues rather than having a tip of the spear and beating like the establishment on the points that we can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, gentleman that we didn't understand his other question. Well, I get this one. He says he has a tiny, tiny amount of ether and BCH on his Exodus wallet. Too few to convert to something else. How do I get it off or what do I do with yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, send me a message on Twitter. Brain, okay. Brain Harrington, send me a message on Twitter and I have an exchange for you. Okay, cool. And I'm what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to make sure that I've got uh, all of, uh, of Brian's stuff on the show notes today on the audio, which will go up on my site about an hour after this live stream ends. There's a link already in there. But if you click it now, because some people do, it's like, it's not there. Well, we're not done yet. We'll, we'll get there. Um, K-Bonk asking, Brian, what was your gateway moment into this concept? What was that point where you yeah. just yeah. crossed, the, crossed yeah. the Rubicon? I really appreciate that. Um, so I'm recorded on podcasts saying the like, well, you know, don't spend your hard money. You want to spend your soft money. You know, uh, good money drives out bad money. Like, you know, kind of we're so early, like that kind of thing. I'm, I'm on podcast saying the Sunday school answers like of, of that. What fast forwarded me like was the lockdowns. Like what fast forwarded me was the lockdowns and spending time in my home and realizing that like there was no place for a Bitcoin meetup to meet. And we had to like find a different place of a restaurant that like chose to stay open through the lockdowns like here in Southern California. Um, and it was also one question that a friend asked me, um, you talked a lot about lower your time preference. And I fully agree with a lot of that. It, it also like a lot of people are hurting and people hit me with the question of like, well, how does it help me now? Like, how does it help me now? And I got tired of telling people to lower their time preference. And I got tired of telling people like we're so early because I think we're so early comes with a lot of apathy and that's what made and then one final thing was like el salvador like what happened in el salvador so mike peterson from bitcoin beach came and talked to our meetup he was also had a episode with um, marty bent on tales from the crypt podcast and that's when it hit me that there's nothing structurally different about the way that bitcoin software on the lightning network works in el salvador and what can happen in southern california and so when that first taco shop like walked into our meetup and asked me to help them like install a BTC pay server. And I just heard that podcast and the lockdowns were happening. I realized that Bitcoin is not something that's happening in the future. It's happening right now. And people don't need freedom in the future. They need freedom right now. And so like I had this thing, like the Bitcoiners like to talk about citadels, like the citadels are at hand, like the circular economy is at hand. This is not a future thing. Like this, this is happening right now. We're participating like right now. And so that like it truly was like the lockdowns and everything that happened about that that accelerated my thinking. 
I am so glad you mentioned the word Citadel because I don't think there is a word more misunderstood by some very prominent Bitcoin maxis. They literally think it is a stonewalled city that you keep the establishment out of. And they don't understand that Bitcoin is the wall of the Citadel and we're building them now. They don't understand at all what the word means. And they're in some sort of medieval castle walled garden mindset. And that is not because we'll we'll have another hour if we go. Maybe we'll have you back on and we'll just talk about the real Bitcoin citadels. But that's really really a slight hybrid thing. A slight hybrid image in my brain is homeowners associations stacking Bitcoin and buying the land back from their city and buying the land back from their broken county. That's a hybrid. I, I like that idea, you know, a, a more of a property management company mm-hmm. or, you know, you do a development and then you do a stack, a, a sat stacking for things. And then you fund all of your maintenance or whatever, as long as it's me with HOAs. I hate HOAs, but for they sure. could for be sure. limited in scope to where they can't tell you what you can't do. In fact, that for could sure. be the primary thing is you don't get to tell your neighbor what you can't do. Yeah. But you could eventually not only like everybody owns their land anyway, but you could almost buy like this band of land around you right. and create that a, instead of a walled city. What you're creating is a nature moat, right? Yep. Common area that incorporate it encompasses the development so that you don't have somebody building an Amazon distribution center in your backyard for just one yep. example, or God knows what else they're putting an yep. interstate highway through it or what have you. Um, yeah. I, I think that again, with the whole idea though of, you know, when you start spending Bitcoin, I've said, and I, I think this is not wrong. It's just wrong context. The mistakes I make in I've made in Bitcoin in my life are not buying more than I did and spending more than I should have. But that can be misunderstood as it to be taken as never spend Bitcoin. What I'm saying yeah. is never spend Bitcoin without replacing it, right? And changing the money you're going to spend anyway into Bitcoin before you spend it. That's Correct. fine. That's, that's different. I have a shotgun and I often say, do you want to see a $30,000 shotgun? Because I'll show you one. I have a beautiful 1940s Belgian-made Brownie A5. Man, it was made in the Mm. middle of World War II. It's a Mm. cool gun. It was worth about $1,200 when I bought it. I got it when Bitcoin was like $600 and something bucks. And I got Mm -hmm. it for one Bitcoin. I bought it for half price. Mm -hmm. And today you can look at it as a a, a $30,000 shotgun. Right. Yep. Or you can look at it like we looked at Bitcoin pizzas. That was a three hundred ninety million dollar pizza purchase or whatever. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was a six hundred dollar purchase Correct. at the time that I made it. The Correct. mistake wasn't spending Bitcoin because the guy wanted to get into Bitcoin so bad. And I what I it was a barter blanket thing. And I'm like, not only will I give Amazing. you a Bitcoin, I, I will set you up with a wallet and I will send yep. you a Bitcoin and teach you to do it. So yep. it was a good purchase. My mistake was not going, you know what? Restack those freaking sacks. Yep. Yep. That was the yep. not spending, yep. not restacking. That was the mistake. Correct. You're always spending Bitcoin. You're always spending Bitcoin because money is your labor. Money you is your Bitcoin. labor. It is your time. It is your time. It is your labor. You're always spending Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the way we measure opportunity costs now in this new reality. Yeah. Even though a lot of things that I buy, I buy for dollars. Like you said, you know, buy the thing. Yep. Yep. I still now think I could buy the thing or I could convert it to sats. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. that mental switch is huge. Uh, Mike says yep. he doesn't understand the yep. having, right? I think yeah. there's a lot of people. We, the people that have done the research and orange pilled themselves, we throw out words that are. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty simple mm-hmm. concept, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that everybody knows what it is. I feel like sometimes my web dude Tom, who's here right now, he'll send me an email. All we have to do is blah 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 blah. I'm like, can you do that shit? Yep. He's like, yeah. Yep. I'm like, then fucking do it. I don't know what it means. Don't, yep. I'm not gonna pretend yep. I do. What's the having, yep. bro? Yeah, so the ha- the having is the monetary policy of Bitcoin. So a Bitcoin block happens every 10 minutes. So all the transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain get grouped together every 10 minutes and the miners, the computer ASICs that run, verify the transactions, add it to the block. In return for the energy that they like expend mining, they are paid a block reward. The block reward is the new Bitcoin being released. So the having is every four years, the amount of Bitcoin released every 10 minutes to the miners gets cut in half. So every four years it gets cut in half um, and then it goes out for like, it goes all the way out until like 2140. So that's how um, that's how everyone knows, all participants know what the monetary policy is. 
Yeah, and, and it's it, protected. If people ask them, like, well, how can we ensure, like, we've heard you say it's incorruptible. How do we ensure that no one can mess with the having? We ensure that no one messes with the having because I run my copy of the Bitcoin software and my wallets are verified from my copy of the Bitcoin software. Or I'm using an exchange that is also running a copy of the Bitcoin software and they are ensuring that no one's changing it. And if you choose to pull down a copy of the software and change that and then try to send me a Bitcoin from that changed software, it doesn't accept my wallet, does not accept the payment. And so, and same thing, the miners, the miners recognize that this is not running the software that we know as Bitcoin. And so there's no, the payment will not go through. Yeah, it's protected in many, many ways but by the consensus mechanism. So if you had the horsepower to overtake consensus, the most beneficial thing you could do for yourself is participate in the network as a good member of the network. It's more profitable to, so it's, it's not that I, it's not that I trust people. It's I trust the human nature is self-interest, right? Mm -hmm. And most anarchists know that. And the bigger it gets, the bigger that number gets. And then the way it affects inflation is, 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 is multifold. So right now the inflation rate of Bitcoin is two point something percent or something like that. It, it still is increasing. But as the number gets bigger, the percentage goes down and then each having dings down the percentage. Right. So it, we call it deflationary, but it's only deflationary if it gets used. It's only deflationary if it gets a combination. Of, and I, I think we could talk about that real quick. People have this idea that like it's either spend it all or hodl it all. Right. And that's how we make number go up by reducing or increasing valid value. I think it's both. I think that every time somebody takes a stack of sats and moves it into long term hodling, it it is it is creating a deflationary effect. But every time somebody spends sats, it's also increasing utility. Right. So we need both right. of those. And that's what you and I are talking about. Yeah. today. Is you can spend and save Bitcoin just like crazy talk. You spend and save dollars. Right, Correct. we save yep. dollars and we spend dollars. The problem is, the dollar you save is robbed. Yep, and it is robbed at will, at the discretion of the people that benefit by robbing it mm -hmm. with inflation. But, right, where the dollar yeah, you spend is robbed too, and that's what yeah. the dollar you spend is robbed too, because yeah. Visa and credit card networks are ripping it, dude. Even yeah. the ACH network, that's quote unquote free, is ripping it. Because the bank doesn't give you your ACH money on the day that it gets delivered to them. They hold it. And what are they doing with it? Making money off of it. So they rip money on the ACH network and they rip money on the credit card network. Um, so yeah, your dollar, like you're getting screwed every single time you're touching dollars. So Rick here says Bitcoin changes behavior to favor savings. If Bitcoin becomes base money, do we not create a society that consumes and produces less? This I love this question, right? Because the entire point of an inflationary economy is to stimulate spending, investment, blah, 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 blah. I don't think we produce less and consume less. I think we consume and produce more intelligently. We don't produce just for the sake of production and we don't consume just for the sake of consumption. And we're in a like supposedly the people that are in power, supposedly what they want is for us to produce and consume less because it's bad, bad for my planet. Right. So I think you will never create a society that you can just say, well, you can have less. You'll have nothing and be happy and have that really work. But you can create a monetary system that incentivizes people to say, before I spend this thing, spend on this thing, do I need this thing? I think that's good. And I think that when you are going into a production business, a manufacturing business, a tech business, whatever, that if it's not, I can just have an unlimited faucet of money. Does this thing actually bring value to people or I'm doing it just right. to enrich myself? So what right. are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So um, great question. Deep question. And yeah, there's no positive future for humanity where we use less energy. There's no positive future. And I know this question isn't specific about energy, but there's there's no positive future for humanity where we're using less or like producing like less. And I agree with you about the word intelligently. I think like you right now, there's a lot of dead weight economic activity that doesn't make economic sense. Like people are doing it for other reasons. Like the financial, the financial economy 
and the real economy are two separate things in the current world that we're in. Yeah. And so you actually have people that are only participating in the financial economy and in gaming the financial economy rather than participating in the real economy, doing things. That's what the, that's what supply shortages are. So like arguably we have let like less is getting done right now. Our quality of life, George Gammon does a really good job of talking about this. I think George Gammon YouTube channel, his whiteboard videos on economics are very, very good. Um, like that we are poorer, like society is poorer right now. Like we're producing less and the waiting times to get things is less. That doesn't make any sense. Like technology should be making life better. Technology makes life better. And so just an example of this is like what I'm talking about of like getting into like homesteading and getting into like with Bitcoin as a financial base for myself. I've been able to expand my solar panels. I've been able to install a cistern. I've been able to like, I've been able to build a home office because Bitcoin affords me the ability to work from like my own house. Like, so in that sense, like Bitcoin is like increasing. Bitcoin increases your optionality. Um, another thing is that sats. So 21 million Bitcoin, there's a hundred million sats inside every Bitcoin. People ask about the units like, you, you can go sub sats. So this whole mm. concept of like, oh, there's not enough Bitcoin for everyone or like all these things, it, it's just a measuring stick. Like just think about like yeah. people quote GDP numbers, like the GDP numbers, just think about like, and that's a flawed measurement and like whatever, but just like think about the product, the gross product creation, the gross productivity of the establishment system running on fiat money and how the financial economy and the real economy are separate. And then think about the Bitcoin economy and how we're filling up this bucket. We're filling up this bucket. Like people are going to know where the Bitcoiners live because the roads work better in that part of town. The infrastructure works better. The stuff gets delivered on time in that part of town because it's running on like good money. So no, I don't think we'll produce less. I think we'll produce more. No, and I, I, I think, think it's going to produce like, a renaissance. It's going to produce a renaissance. It's society. Like, this is why I have hope for the future. Yeah, I think it's valued production versus production. Because we, we we call things production that are nothing. So an example of that would be within the stock market, high-frequency trading. And a production is the fact that I can sell the server on, on the east side of my data center for, for a higher fee to a high-frequency trading company because the, the, the fiber optic cable is 200 feet closer to the exchange than the one on the on the west side of the data, data center on the other side of the river in New Jersey, right? And that free, a high frequency trading company will literally pay more money for that server because of 200 feet of optical cable because it gives them a millisecond advantage in their high frequency trading screen. And that brings no valuable to, any, to anybody. Mm -hmm. And you, what you end up with this thinking is, let's say that some idiot in, in crypto created PenCoin, right? And we're going to use PenCoin as a stand-in for fiat, right? And some moron probably did. There probably is a PenCoin. Who the hell knows? There's everything coin. And so in fiat, what we say is since this pen buys less over time, the solution is over time to turn the one pen into two pens. And that's their plan to get greater production, greater consumption, yeah. and economic growth. The Bitcoin plan is if the pen buys twice as much tomorrow as it does today, I don't need another pen. Yes. Right? So even as money gets locked up in long-term savings and holdings, the power of the one pen multiplies. And you know, people to understand how far we are from even worrying about fractionalizing sats, right? One penny sats is one million dollar Bitcoin. Yeah. Almost yeah. like that was You're, a plan or something. I people say we hit dollar parity back in eleven or whatever it was. I think we hit dollar parity when a sat's worth a penny. Yeah, I think that's yeah. true dollar parity, yeah. and I think and it's so at ten million dollar Bitcoin, which people think is just stupid. I'm just going to mm -hmm. remind you that people thought hundred dollar Bitcoin was stupid. Just mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. um, but that's a dollar a sat. Yep. So even at a dollar yep. a sat, like I, I think we can handle this. I, I yeah, I didn't know we could fractionalize sats though. I I guess it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty deep. Like, it's not like, not every wallet has that. And we'd go over yeah. the same thing of like, you right now, wallets are adding Lightning Network. We'd go through the same thing of some wallets do it, then some wallets don't. And you'd have this yeah. whole transitionary period. So 100%. But then everyone should look up this video. Look up, the, type into YouTube, everything divided by 21 million. That's a great video that illustrates this. And it talks about how, like, and I keep trying to bring up the bucket. Like, the, you have a bucket of economic activity over here. You have a bucket of economic activity over here. And so, um, yeah.
and the currency, the purchasing power of the currency going farther. This is a humble mechanic here. I don't know if you know who he is. He's like a big time YouTuber, member of our community. He said, you won't get a better deal buying a car for cash in general. I agree, but I'm going to still say cash is debt. It's just the paper representation of that. Yeah, they'll make they'll make the deal because they don't have to do the financing, right? You know, I, and I I think that's true if you're buying a used car. By the way, if you go to a dealership, they're not incentivized to make you a better deal as a cash buyer because they make money on the financing. Right. Right. So right. yeah, but I think he's right. But I also think it's important. The reason I brought that up, one, it's humble, and two, uh, I think it's important to understand that dollars are debt. And this is why I love Lightning, and I, why I think like one of the many reasons Lightning wins. One of the reasons that transborder transactions are so expensive and time consuming for the banks is the banks are transacting in a liability. So it's a hot potato and I want to get rid of it as quickly as I can because it's not going into my reserves. So there's no incentive for me to keep a liability. But the next guy in the chain doesn't want it until he knows he can get rid of it. And then you put all the jurisdictional shit on it. And so you have this very clunky moving a liability through a network and you take something like Lightning, which is perfectly named, except everybody thinks it means Litecoin. That's the only problem with the branding of it. And then you take that and you send it through that system in seconds. So nobody's really holding the bag. You, it, it's, I, I, I've been encouraging my people to learn about Lightning and how the funding of the nodes works, even if you're not going to run a node, because then you'll understand international banking. And then you'll also know when somebody says, well, Lightning is just fiat for, for Bitcoin or whatever. It's fractional. No, it's not. And if you understood the layer that it represents, it's not. But you would get how the liquidity works moving through the, the chain. But you'd also understand if I said, we're going to send money to, uh, who, who do we have next? K-Bonk. We're going to send money to K-Bonk. I'm going to give it to Brian. Brian's going to hold it overnight. Do you trust the transaction? Well, we trust the transaction as, as much as we trust you. Right. But if I say I'm going to give the money to Brian, Brian's instantly going to give it to Kmbonk. We don't have to give you very much trust. And if you have liquidity in the game and you screw us, then Kmbonk just takes your liquidity. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. we're done. So it, it's still trustless and it doesn't it doesn't increase the amount of Bitcoin. It actually we talked about this offline. It reduces the amount of Bitcoin in circulation because it locks Bitcoin up as liquidity in the layer. So yeah. it actually puts pressure on the price in an upward uh, direction. Yeah. It's, it's hard and, to understand, but it's not. It's hard to understand until you do it. And then you're like, oh. Yeah. And I would tell people like, w- what's probably going to happen is that wallets are most likely going to go like uh, to a single balance viewed. And so your wallet will choose for you whether to send Bitcoin over the uh, main network or the Lightning network. And so like you can choose to understand like the deepness of it at whatever level you want to. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't, most people using the internet today do not understand TCP IP right. and they don't have to. Yeah. And that's, that's where we're headed with this. But I think it's at this stage, if you're having trouble accepting this or realizing what, to me, the beauty of it is once you understand that you're like, oh shit, yeah. million dollar Bitcoin is nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. It, it's, it's a stepping stone and it seems so far away right now. And again, right. where's your time preference? But once you get that, you're like, well, shit, they're going to have to use it. We're going to have to collateralize a half a trillion dollars. So either it's all the Bitcoin or Bitcoin has to go up to like 20% being a half a trillion dollars to make it work, but it has to work because they have to use it. It's, 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 it's kind of crazy really. Um, this is an interesting question. I'm interested in this. Yeah. Uh, who are yeah. you following in the BT, BT, who are you following in the Bitcoin space yeah. that you respect what they're creating? I think yeah. they know who I follow. So that's gotta be for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the two the two that I want to shout out is um, I really like Marty Bent and Nick Carter. And the reason for that is Nick Carter does a great job of like Nick Carter does an extremely good job of wearing the suit when he needs to wear the suit and explaining to people like how big a deal like Bitcoin is. But he also doesn't mince words and he doesn't hold he doesn't hold punches like he um, he. <laughs> He gave the panel he was on at Bitcoin 2022 was um, called You Are the Carbon They Want to Reduce. And he just does a great job of talking about the energy intersection. He does a great job of talking about the finance side of it, um, everything. And then Marty Bent is just like uh, like a great addition to just the, I would call it like the populism, like podcasting space. Um, He's He's been on Tucker Carlson, like, um, which is really cool to see. And they've just both these guys have followers freaks, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, he calls yeah, it great. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I like it. And yeah, so it's just positive. I just really appreciate um, both of them. Very, very cool. So we kind of hit this, but I guess we can hit it just a little bit again because it is Mike and mm-hmm. he's been around a long time. How do you use Bitcoin as a currency for daily purchases and still keep up with your changing yep. basis? But he was asking more about tax reporting. I think this is yep. actually an issue. Um, it is one of the things holding Bitcoin back. Yep. It's where I, I'd like yep. to see our government realize it's in their benefit to be the Bitcoin base of the world. Yep. And if you want to, okay, I'm not okay with any tax, but I, I would take the deal of you're going to tax the high frequency. Tra- I'm trading Bitcoin for money. Like yep. I'm trading it just to make money. But you're going to say yep. if you're spending it to buy stuff, it's money. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. But how do we deal with it now? Because they don't. I think some of it is like it's on lightning and you don't need to know, but. I can, yeah, I can hit this. I can hit this. So great question. And I agree that it's a major friction point. So, and I have the hashtag like get on zero in my Twitter bio. And I like talking to people about this because this was tripping me up for a long time. Here, here's how it works. If you, here's the current strategy that I use. If you direct deposit your Bitcoin to, or direct deposit your paycheck to Bitcoin. So it is Bitcoin, right? And then all of my day-to-day transactions go on a credit card and then my mortgage and then the three bills that don't take a credit card, right? So now there's five ACH transactions, five okay. ACH transactions per month that have to be taken from my Bitcoin balance. So that's five transactions. If the purchasing power increases, there's capital gains taxes just on the increase. If the purchasing power decreases, then there's tax loss harvesting, okay? Okay. So that's like, that is what it is because the establishment kind of made a mistake and kind of put themselves in a corner labeling it as property because wash sale rules don't apply to property. And so there's, that's one way to tackle it. And that's where I've been going with it. And this is how regular W2 people are able to use Bitcoin as their base currency. You have access to credit. So I say this, like we've been talking about this whole podcast, like dollars are credit and debt. Bitcoin is money. Because yeah. I'm a person with a job, like in America, I have access to credit lines. And so if I'm dealing with a counterparty and they're requesting dollars, then I'm going to give them a dollar on credit because they don't deserve my money. That's why it hurts. It actually hurts my heart when I watch people pass paper money over. Because I'm like, yeah. why are you paying them like the money? Why are yeah. you paying them the asset? Why are you not paying them in the IOU that they're requesting? Yeah, You're not receiving yeah. any benefit. We, we receive no benefit from paying in money. You yeah. receive benefits for paying in credit because we have a backed up, wor- like backwards world. So this is the way you dial this back in the transition that we're living on is you hold, I don't hold dollars on the asset side of my balance sheet. I hold dollars on my credit lines. And then when I get paid, I pay down my credit lines and I move my excess labor into Bitcoin, which is Got money. It. Yeah, and then correct your point. You think like a rich not, person. That's what yeah. rich people have been doing for hundreds of years, and they've yes. used appreciating and, assets like real estate as leverage principles to do it with. It's it's the seller formula, right? And so I think that the future is moving. Like right now, we talk a lot about dollar cost averaging, and if if that's the stage you're at, is dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin? Sweet, terrific. I think what's going to happen is dollar cost averaging is going to turn into self custody averaging. Because there's no pur- there's zero purpose for holding dollars for any longer than half a day. So everything gets deposited to Bitcoin as base money on these platforms where your where your Bitcoin balance is able to interact with the ACH network, and then you're withdrawing excess to your Lightning wallet. Which to you, I'm going to allow you to say that point of your Lightning wallet is like the cash in your wallet. So yep. you can take that for what you think. Yeah, exactly. And so the other side of this I see is long term, I I see wallets being created that don't just solve this problem, they actually capitalize on it. So you mentioned the wash rule, right? So if you want to change the wash rule, you're going to have to change all the rules and that's not going to work for you either. So if you leave it in place, I see an app that allows you to silo your Bitcoin to get in, get, get away from first in, first out. So I'm, I'm I'm, I'm hodling long and I don't have first in, first out against my hodling. It's yes. only my cash flow that I have first in, first out on. And I see the wallet saying, today would be a great day for you to sell and buy back your Bitcoin. You will you will incur a capital loss on paper of X. And at the end of each month, they're going to spit you, you know, text to self statement. 
Correct. It's going to be your statement that goes with your taxes. And it's yep. always going to angle to keep you positive in reality and negative on paper. Correct. And then you're going to take those 12 pieces of paper and give them to your accountant when you file your taxes. And you're going to write a capital loss off because yep. that volatility, there's no way that we can't game that volatility to create a phantom loss in every 12, 12 uh, 30 day cycle. None. Correct. And, then Look, and all here's the accounting head works that are supposed to be so hard to do. You know, we have a, a, a computer in our pockets that's about a million Correct. times more powerful then put pe people in space in the 60s, yes. right? Yes. And so yes. there's no reason it can't do that. It's a spreadsheet. Correct. It's a spe Correct. spreadsheet with a very look, limited predictive algorithm. Very limited. Look, software, look, freedom fighters can write lines of code faster than bureaucrats can write laws of code. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. For people that are skeptical of technology, I completely understand that. There's a lot of frustrating things that it has caused. Totally agree. Totally agree about the surveillance state and like frustrating things with big tech and all this stuff. However, software writers can write lines of code that solve bureaucratic problems faster than bureaucrats can create new problems. And I would reference non-Bitcoin examples. Uber solved a, a need. Airbnb solved the need. Here's one, AAA. Like you can pay a AAA subscription and go get your sticker for your permission to drive your car from yeah. AAA instead of having to stand in line at the bureaucracy. TurboTax. TurboTax democratized understanding the all of the pages of information. Um, LegalZoom democratized the ability to set yourself up with good decision making. And so our what we don't know is fear. It like it, we become afraid of that and we don't take action because we're afraid. Apps every single day, even outside of Bitcoin, even not talking about Bitcoin, software every single day, when you pick the right apps and pick the right way to fuse software into your life will help you navigate like into this optimistic future. Yeah. Like we are winning. We are winning. Hu That's humans. hard for people to get in their head right there, dude. I've been saying yeah. this for years. We're winning. We are winning. I go speak in public and I'm standing in front of 500 people and I say we're winning and they cheer. But as soon as they get away from the other 500 people and you, we're talking to thousands of people, but as individuals, because it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's an individual cast to that person. Mm -hmm. Right. So we mm -hmm. spread this out. There's not that many people in live feed. It's, it's funny too. I want to say this right now. My Bitcoin stuff is my least attended live feeds. But I have the most super chats in it. That's an yep. interesting thing, right? And the most the most tipping and what have you. Uh, but so it's when people are around each other, you tell them that they cheer. When they're by themselves, it's like they're afraid to admit that we're winning. We can't be yeah. winning. Look at the TV set. They're coming after our Second Amendment rights over a tragedy yeah. and the, the Ukraine war and the formula shortage. You know, we can't be winning. Maybe all that shit's yep. happening because we're winning. Like wars never are pretty, even when you're winning. Right. I think that's the other problem. We teach war really the wrong way in school. Like people think, well, what happened in World War II? So the United States entered and we won. Well, there was five years of bloodshed and your grandfather slogged through shit and watched his buddy's brain get blown out yeah. so we could yeah. win. Right. Maybe yeah. it would have been better if we could have avoided fighting that conflict in the first place. Right. Like we don't teach war that way. And I think there's an agenda for it. Um, yep. Next up, Rick says you still need to yep. buy. You still need to earn fiat to buy into Bitcoin, even with direct deposit model. Someone's taking USD to sell your Bitcoin. Where is their loss in equity? Yeah. So, um, good question. Like, or yeah. So, where is the loss in liquidity? I guess it's that you're still like, yes, US dollars are leaving the bank account of the company. And you're correct. An exchange is making a spread to direct deposit like the Bitcoin to you because. Not enough companies hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet and then remit the payment direct in Bitcoin. Totally agree. So it's a transitionary tool that is reworking brain cells. And it's still on my balance sheet. Like I'm not giving like talk about um, what's it called? The uh, velocity. Like I'm not giving velocity to USD. Like I'm yeah. once it's with me, like I'm not, I'm trying to hold it for as least amount of as possible. So it's still, so yes. Is it there? Yes. Cause we live yeah, in a transitionary, also, we live in a transitionary system. Transition, right? Like you can't, and, 
like this is the same people problem people have with anarchism. If I can't get there in five minutes, then it doesn't work. Or I can find this one reason it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, right? And like you still have that problem in your system, so you can't really use that as an objection. Like we have to get there, and this is the transitional tool to getting there is doing as much as you can with Bitcoin and don't think it's not hurting them. If it wasn't hurting them, they wouldn't be fighting it. Right. The central yeah. bankers wouldn't be telling you they're deeply concerned about the poor people of El Salvador, because that's what we know. That's what I, that's what central bankers in the UK do. They sit up at night in their beds and wake their wife up and go, honey, I'm I, I'm really concerned about the people. of El Yeah, sure. They are. Right. So this is hurting them yeah. and they know it's that's hurting fine. them. And yeah. Yes, there's still you're, there's still liquidity. What you're doing is you're you're not stopping it, you're pinching it. And if pinching's what we can do for now, then that's what we do. Well, and it's also it's me saying it's me saying that has nothing to do with me. Like that world, like stops at my like at the what I have agency over. Yeah, that that has nothing to do with me. And that's so in every conversation, in every action that I'm taking that I have agency over because I can't fix everything. Like I'm choosing to like not participate in that world like i can see this becoming a thing like like fair trade coffee like or people like people are sliding there where it's going to reach a point where your friend slides their credit card when you're out to dinner with them and you're going to look at them and you're going to say are you still participating in that like what is wrong <laughs> with you what is wrong with you yeah. like dude the steakhouse has taken bitcoin for two years now yeah why, why are, are you, you still that? participating in that what how is how are you a counterculture rebel using yes. the the system's for currency right yeah because young people i think this is a, a real good way to meet greet uh meet with young people is that they want to rebel i've never yes. met a 20 year old who didn't want to rebel well then yeah. you're you're not rebelling you're cooperating i think there's there's definitely some there. And so you hit something too, like fair trade coffee. It's really interesting, the synchronicity today. Tom, I love when Tom said, this is my guy that runs my web server and all for me. He said, for graduation gifts, I'm now giving 12 words as a gift. That's yeah. a fucking marketing slogan, yeah. right? And yeah. never underestimate the power of a marketing slogan. We can make people who are peaceful people want to murder people with a slogan like freedom isn't free. Like yeah. giving 12 words as a gift that's freaking brilliant, man. I yep. mean, I think we can run yep. like the Bitcoin community needs to grab shit like that and run mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, here's a practical question and then we'll wrap up. Uh, yep. Ryan says, so I have a small landscaping yep. business. How would I go about accepting some Bitcoin payments? And then I transfer and then I transfer them to my excess wallet. Well, just take them into your excess wallet. Um, so I think one of the real strengths of Bitcoin right now, in my opinion, or crypto in general, but certainly Bitcoin, anybody that wants to spend it knows how to spend it. So mm -hmm. if you're like, all you do is just tell all your customers, I accept Bitcoin, some percentage yep. of them are going to accept Bitcoin and give a QR code, and let them pay you, right? Yeah. If you need it on the books or something, the, the, this is why I like Exodus personally for a wallet. They have the ability to enter notes with every transaction so that when you give them your bookkeeper or what have you, because if you want that business on board, then I want it on board too, right? I get that. Yep. And that's yep. what I would do to start out. And then you can worry about some sort of point of sale type situation later. Yep. I would just start yep. taking. Yep. Anything totally agree. That? Totally okay. agree. No, start small. Start, start small and get momentum. Start small and get momentum. And then uh, send me a message on Twitter too. Like, because if you want to talk about point of sales, I can direct you to them. So I just want to real quick acknowledge some of the people that sent us some super chats. Who sent me some super chats? They asked if I was going to share it with you. I said, "No way, man! He's got to get his own." Uh, John sent us ten bucks and said, "Been listening for twelve years." Thank Jack. Thank you, hey, uh, John. Uh, also, next, why is that not moving? Okay. Um, Op three MD says it's pronounced entropy, not entropy, Jack. Uh, Potentic mode off. Great guess and great interview. You are totally allowed to correct my pronunciation and my regional dialect anytime you want as long as you super trap me when you do it. Uh, Mike says, thanks for encouraging me to buy some Bitcoin nice. five years ago. Who are nice. Mike? I'm glad you did. And other Mike just gave us 10 bucks because I think we're cool. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, dude, this is one of the best Bitcoin conversations I've ever had. We went in some deep places. You got things yeah. out of me I didn't know I had. Yeah. And I yeah. love having a guest like that. Our platform is open to you anytime you want to come back. And if I can be of help to you, uh, let me know. Perfect. No, really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. My uh, my DMs are open on Twitter. Brain Harrington, and so I like talking to people one on one on there. And no, thanks for thanks for being on the air for as long as you have.
Yeah, man, I appreciate it. And guys, uh, like I said, I'll make sure that uh, all of all of his stuff is available to you guys in the audio. It's late. We stayed on almost two hours here, so I'm going to go grab some lunch. But uh, I will get the, uh, the the static version up in just a bit, and I'll make sure you guys can connect with him. And I will tell you, if you DM him, he actually answers. I know I don't always answer TMs. I always say email me, but uh, he answers his DMs. So, again, uh, thank you for being with us today, man.